God bless you, beloved. This is Pastor Michael Young, Senior Pastor of Christ Cathedral Church, and I want to welcome you to the Trinity Broadcast Network for another edition of TBN's Joy in Our Town. Joy in Our Town is a show to where we seek to address and prayerfully find biblical solutions to our community's issues and problems. Uh, I hope you're ready today for a very uh, information-filled and very moving show today because we have two incredible guests that are going to talk about the issue of assistance to homeless families and transitional housing. I'd like to present to the show today Ms. Dorothea Reed, who is the founder and CEO of her organization, and Sister Janae Bennett. They both come to us from Be Blessed to Outreach Ministries. How are you ladies doing today? We're doing We're great. great. Thank awesome, you. awesome. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about your organization and, and, and what it is you do? Okay. Be Blessed Too is an outreach ministry where we actually go out into the community uh, first and third Saturdays. Um, the inception of Be Blessed Too came because um, the Lord called me to the streets mm. after graduating from seminary. And I said, to the streets, Lord? He said, yes, to the streets. <laughs> so we actually started out in, our, in my SUV um, just handing out water and crackers. Um, then the Lord started opening up doors of opportunity to where we, we minister to them, just handing out crackers and waters. But in the long run, other uh, ministries began to embrace our passion. Mm. Uh, we were blessed with a, um, a 1980 uh, truck that was given to us. And uh, we was able to have clothes and beyond our means, imagination, so that we can supply their needs. So in going to the campsites, we, we discovered that it was just not food they need. They need toiletries. They needed clothes. They needed relationships. Mm. They needed people to talk to them to understand, you know, not to judge, but just to love. Mm. And that's what we... Um, sought out to accomplish. So that's, that's powerful. That's powerful. A couple of things that I want to piggyback on. One, can you let us know how long have you been doing this? How many years have you been doing it? And then the second thing I want to point out is, is you're, you're not going to like soup kitchens. You're not going to pre-planned places that are already having like a soup line set up. You're actually going to the homeless camps. You're actually literally going almost to like ground zero and really seeing, seeing the real needs of the people. So no, number one, um, how long have you been doing it? And then number two, you, you're actually going to the homeless camps, correct? Correct, correct. Wow. Uh, we started this actually, I graduated in June of 2014. So in August of 2014 is when we started. Wow, okay? wow. Okay, and we hit the streets, like I said, just with something very simple. Um, and it, it's, 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 it's interesting because you don't think of people living like that today. You think of people living, you know, not beneath a, a bridge or, or in a shanty or living mm -hmm. in a tent. You know, we think of camping in a tent, but not living in a tent. So when we assess the needs of the homeless, they have all the needs that are the same needs that we have in our house. They have the same needs outside as well. Those are the things that are needed and so we began to access and say we need the we need deodorant. We need to help them, not judge, but again my and that's my passion because oftentimes we as the church we will judge because they don't come in looking like us, why they're there, what purpose are they there. That's not our business. Our business, as, as God said, we are commanded to love them back to life. Yes. You know, and so apart from him, we can't do nothing. So why are we going to put them down for things that we don't know life circumstances? We are blessed. We are beyond blessed. And so we are to extend that blessing to them. And so it gets, I get a joy out of it, loving them right where they're at. They can be drunk, they can be intoxicated, whatever the verbiage may be, but when, the, when they're in our presence, and Janae can attest to this, they respect. Yes. Wow. They show reverence, they, they show love. They can come in whatever state that they're in, they will get in a circle of prayer and pray with us. Mm, glory to God. You know, glory so, to God. you know, they're human beings, and yeah. God loves each and every person, so. I love that because, really, you know, Jesus specialized in ministering to those who were rejected by their communities and were really right. marginalized. So you're really ministering to a people 
who maybe the mainstream doesn't get an opportunity to touch. Right. Sister Janae, so, so you've partnered with this woman of God as far as this ministry is concerned. What was it that, that draw you to, to this ministry, drew you to this ministry? And, and the reason why I pose that question is, is it's not necessarily very glorious. Now, you talked about you graduated from seminary mm -hmm. and, and the Lord said you're not going to the pulpit necessarily. You're not going to, you know, where limelight is. I want you to hit the streets. Mm -hmm. so, so what is it that attracted you to this particular ministry? One of the things that attracted me to the ministry was originally when I met Minister Reed in my church and she talked about the ministry and what her vision was and just to love people where they were and to love them back to life, mm, as I quote I her. That. And so I was from the South and homelessness, yes, it's there, but I'd never seen anything like I seen when she took me to the actual camps and to see people outside and to hear people just say, how much it meant for us to just engage with them and just hold a decent conversation with them and to make them feel like they were somebody. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so for that for me was an eye catcher and to say that, you know, there's a great work to be done and it's not inside the four walls mm. of a church, but we have people every day that, you know, life has knocked them down or they've mm -hmm. faced whatever circumstances and they don't have that willpower to get back up. Mm. So if it's anything that we need to do, is try to reach out to those people and to let them know that regardless of your circumstance, you know, God still loves you and God can turn this situation around. Glory and you God. have us as fellow sisters and brothers that are here to lean on and try to help love you back right. yeah. to life. So that for me means a lot because I think, you know, we all have things that we can do in our life, but when you can see someone in those conditions, mm. it kind of gives you an appreciation for life and to realize that, you know, we're really blessed to be in the situations <laughs> that we're in and things that we take for granted. They don't even have it to look forward to. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. That's powerful. So right. as you all go out there and I mean, you're engaging real people, True. you know, it's uh, I think if you've never had the opportunity to go to a homeless camp, I think sometimes there can be a disconnect. I mean, these are these are real people who have real stories, and it's not necessarily that they've always done something incredibly wrong. Like just life caused them to get there. What are some What are some stories? Maybe not a specific story. Maybe a specific story. What are some stories that have that have impacted you? That was like, you know, if it had not been for the grace of God, mm -hmm. there go I. Right. Right. Well, one of the stories that I can uh, think about is a young man that we met when we first started out there. Um, he approached us and said, I'm going to help you out here. And he's homeless himself. He said, I'm going to give you the, those that are in need and those that are living inside. Mm. And when we first met him, he was drinking 20 beers a day. Wow. And having five packs of smoking, five packs of cigarettes a day. Wow. So he recently went inside, got a place inside. God blessed him and opened up a door for him in December of 2015 Praise where God. he's inside now. But he still comes back out to get the bare necessities that he needs. And so in those bare necessities, he even shared, he says, I'm down to two beers a day. Look at that. And I'm down to four cigarettes a day. Look at that. It's all okay. relative, and right? And so it's right. a relationship and it's God's <laughs> timing. Oftentimes in church, we look for somebody to, because they're accepting Christ in their life. We're looking for immediate change in their life. And if they're not changing, something's wrong. Mm. But we have to remember and relate back. I can relate back to me. It's a process. Yes. It's a process. It's a process. God continues to show and extend his love to us even yet when when we fail him, he continues to love us. So how come we can't do that saying to the homeless or to those that are less fortunate? So I think that, that that has helped this young man to make his transition to where he is, making strive to get better, you know. That's powerful. Yes. And I think one of the most powerful principles in scripture that I read, Matthew 25, mm -hmm. is where Jesus said, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. Right. right. And they're saying, right. well, like, when do we not feed you, Lord? And he said, when you, when you did it to the least of them, oh, exactly. you did it unto me. Exactly. Is that kind of your approach when it comes to this ministry? Is like, not only are these human beings, but I feel like 
I'm ministering unto the Lord when I when I do this. Yes, this absolutely. Is, and I think when you form relationships with them and you start to talk to them, you'll you'll find out that a lot of them feel like just the people that are fortunate enough to not be in this situation, they don't even acknowledge them as human beings. Exactly. And the thing about it is I feel like, you know, how can we say that we love God and then we have humans here hmm. that are on earth and exactly. we pass judgment and say, you know, oh, well, so many people fake. And yes, you have those situations, but then there are real life people mm -hmm. that are out here hurting. And as you alluded to earlier, everyone that's out there hasn't always just been there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes exactly. life circumstances mm -hmm. put us in situations and they just don't have that fight to get back on the path. So I think it's very important for us to look at it that way and realize, you know, that these people, they still deserve to be loved. Mm -hmm. And even with all of the faults and the hangups, we all have them too. They still deserve to be loved and to be helped to the best of our ability because that's what it's about. If you can't help your fellow man up, then... Well, I think about what James said, you know, he, he talked about faith, this, mm -hmm. this topic of faith, exactly. this issue of faith, and we're, we're faith people, we're mm -hmm. believers. Mm -hmm. But then James went around and smacked us right in the faith and said that if you have faith but you have no works, mm -hmm. your faith is dead. Mm -hmm. If you see a brother in need and you're not meeting that need, he's like, well, really, it's like a form of godliness, but you're denying the power mm -hmm. thereof. Mm -hmm. so, so just to hear you being really move, I believe, by the Holy Spirit, being moved by the compassion of Christ. I think about Jesus when he saw the people who came out when he did the miracle with the two fish and five loaves of bread. Right. The Bible said that what prompted him to do that is, is he had compassion on them. Right. So it's just, you know, it's encouraging to see two women of God such as yourself. And ironically, I've encountered you all out there at some of these homeless camps. I know that you all also have a team that you're representing here today. You know, we just commend you for really not just representing Christ, but representing Christ in the earth realm. And, and really, it's not always just about meeting a spiritual need. Many times it's also about meeting that, that practical need. So, so we salute you for that. You. Stay tuned, ladies. We're going to bring you back. We want, to, we want to talk a little bit more. We've talked about hunger in this segment. Next segment, we want to talk a little bit about housing and some things that you all have going on as far as that's concerned. Stay tuned. All those who are tuned in, we're coming back for another powerful segment of Joy in Our Town.